you become as popular and cool as Captain Beto? With enough experience? Paimon's already seen lots of things from adventuring together with you! One also needs to experience trials and setbacks. Paimon almost drowned that one time! And maintain an inspirational disposition. Uh-huh! Paimon's always rooted for you! One must also have a... mature outlook towards problems. Hey! Are you just trying to say that Paimon can't make it? Liyue's cuisine is very different from that of Mondstadt. For example, in Mondstadt, you can hardly find spicy fried dishes anywhere. That's why they say climate creates cuisine, you know? But wait, why do all of Tavat's slimes taste the same then? That's because you only know one way of cooking them. Walk in seven clockwise circles, then walk in seven anti-clockwise circles. Then open your eyes. Are you sleepwalking? Nope. Paimon is just trying to see if that antique shop from Heart's Desire actually exists. Well, assuming that a shop in a story does exist, what would you like to buy, Paimon? A slime creator! Does such a thing even exist? <laughs> The wind amongst the branches is good. I love the way it smells. <laughs> I said the exact same thing last time. <sighs> Why do I only say these things when I'm down on my luck? Ah, uh, so you noticed. <sighs> this isn't something I'm meant to discuss with ordinary people. But I suppose I can let you in on the secret. As you know, Visions are external magical foci that only a small minority of people possess. They use these visions to channel elemental power. In truth, every wielder of a vision is one who can attain godhood and ascend to Celestia. We call such people Allogenes. Allogenes? Paimon's never heard of them before. <laughs> That's because this is a secret that only Archons are privy to. We don't need primitive tools like visions. Instead, each Archon has an internal magical focus that resonates directly with Celestia itself, known as a Gnosis. <laughs> it's just a glowing glass ball I carry around to avoid suspicion. So who was that nasty woman who sent Paimon flying and stole your Gnosis? Her name is Signora. Number eight of the Harbingers. She and the rest of the Harbingers have been given godlike executive authority by the Tsaritsa of Snejnaya, and with it, strength surpassing that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa of Snejnaya? Isn't that. Indeed. She is one of the seven. The Tsaritsa who reigns from the Zeppelyarni Palace, and the one person that the Fatui Harbingers all answer to. The Seven don't always get along well, but still. I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? Five hundred years ago, I knew her well. But I can't say the same is true now. You see, a certain catastrophe happened five hundred years ago. And after that, she cut off all ties with me. But we can save discussion of the Cryo Archon and the Fatui for another day. If you seek the rest of the Seven, many difficulties lie ahead of you still. You should head for Mondstadt's neighboring nation of Liyue. The Geo Archon who reigns there, unlike me, administrates his entire region personally. He only descends once every year to give his divine predictions, which set the direction for Liyue for the rest of that year. Even so, it sounds like he works much harder than a certain someone, hmm? <laughs> In any case, this year's Rite of Dissension is soon to begin. If you miss it, you'll just have to wait another year. What? Why didn't you tell us before? <sighs> well, then bye! We're going! One moment, Windborn Outlander. Yep. Traveler, 
As you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. The birds of Tevat, the songs in the cities, the Tsaritsa, her Fatui and the monsters, they are all part of your journey. The destination is not everything, so before you reach the end, keep your eyes open. Use the chance to take in the world around you. Great. So, that's that for the Animo Archon's admonishments. Back to Venti time. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Up till the end, Devalin remembered his duty as one of the Four Winds. As such, I don't intend to forcibly strip him of that duty and force my ideals of freedom onto him. I just hope that Devalin will be able to choose for himself and understand what freedom is. Before I became an Archon, I too was taught the meaning of freedom in this way by a friend. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Kaya shared some new intelligence, you say? Oh, I see. So, the Abyss Order has a prince who orchestrated the plan to corrupt Devalin? They were probably trying to turn Devalin into a weapon of war for the Abyss. But that said, I have never heard of any such Prince of the Abyss Order. I think so too. Apparently. But how does a Prince come out of nowhere and take command over the entire Abyss Order? If you want to chat, now's the time. A Bard stays not always in a single climb. That Fatui lady didn't hang around, did she? She just grabbed your gnosis and left? She wanted to avoid any eyewitnesses from the Knights of Favonius. The slightest slip-up here would have destroyed the Fatui's diplomatic relations with the Knights. So they're just gonna keep acting like Mondstadt's allies as if nothing happened? <sighs> if only the Seven Nations had banded together against the Abyss Order in the first place. The Fatui possess the strongest military among the Seven Nations, yet they've used it to steal the Holy Liar, covet the power of gods, and use Devalin as a bargaining chip against the Knights. Speaking of the Liar, didn't Diluc say something like this before? He said that the Fatui could only run amok across the Seven Nations and threaten the Knights because of the Harbingers. Yes. As I said earlier, the Cryo Archon has given them authority and strength beyond that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa. Oh, I haven't seen her in 500 years. What is she thinking? What's her plan? Oh, whatever the answer is, I have a feeling it's only going to make your search for the Seven all the more difficult. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. As I said before, Vision wielders are known as allogenes and may ascend to Celestia. A gnosis is a higher order nexus of elemental manipulation and is emblematic of an Archon's status as one of the Seven. But as for which of the Seven took your brother... I'm sorry, I don't know. Wait, as one of the Seven, I'm not clear of suspicion yet either, am I? <laughs> We're a great team indeed. Say... Once you find your brother, how would you like to become one of the new Four Winds? Hmm, you don't seem too into it. Hey, Tone Del Ford! If being one of the Four Winds means free food, you can consider Paimon! <laughs> if you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays... Now's the time. A bard stays not... Well then, best be off to Lue. If the dissension ritual you failed to tally, then another year you must dally.
On the way back to Mondstadt after rescuing Devalin, we finally got to see one of the seven Archons, didn't we? It was interesting to see what kind of god he was. Hmm. Haven't we known Venti for quite a while now? <laughs> As Venti, yes. But still. This was the first time that we got to see him as the animal Archon Barbados. Normally, he hides his true divinity behind the facade of a bard. What does freedom really mean when demanded of you by a god? That was the question that he asked Devalin. I'm still contemplating that. You know? Barbara's really popular, isn't she? Well, she is the idol of the people of Mondstadt. Come to think of it, Paimon doesn't really know what an idol is. It's an occupation in which one's work is to be cute, be well-loved, and earn a boatload of mora. Isn't that the same thing as being a mascot? That's one way to put it. Paimon, have you ever read Vera's Melancholy before? Well, it sure sounds familiar. That book's pretty popular. And I've heard that the author made a tidy sum off of it. <sighs> Paima would love to make lots and lots of Mora. Hmm, it's decided then. Paima will write an adventure story as well. A tale of adventure by Paimon? Correct. It'll be a story in which the brave traveler defeats the dragon, saves the world, and then sits down with her reliable companion for ten seconds. Of sticky honey roast. <laughs> Ten. Uh huh. A happy ending attracts the readers, after all. It's decided then. We'll call it Paimon's Happiness. Wait, what? Paimon was not expecting to see Clockwork Mecca dancing. As dangerous as it is to get too close to them. It sure is nice to watch them from a distance. <laughs> Imagine if they had ones that could sing and play musical instruments, too! That'd be really cool. Then you'd just need some mecha for the audience. And you'd have a show by mecha for mecha. Uh, somehow that's a pretty scary thought. Anyway, mecha are meant to do stuff, not sit there and watch a show. Oh, how about mecha that can paint? Paimon bets their paintings would look just like photos taken with a camera. It sounds like you could just use a camera. Oh! Right, yeah, um... Ugh. Paimon's brain stopped working. What about you? If you could make a clockwork mecha do anything at all, what would it be? Travel guiding, perhaps. Bleep blorp. This is your guide bot speaking. Please go straight on at the next crossroads. Bloop blurp. I... Paimon's just remembered how much training you need before you can own a clockwork mecha. And how expensive they are. Also, who knows if they even work outside of Fontaine? <laughs> the best travel guide into that will not lose her job to some machine. At least... At least not yet.
Charlotte? Who's her friend, and what are they chatting about? Be pleased with the cherry on top, Charlotte. Journalist extraordinaire. Please tell me you're joking. I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? It has to be. I've invested all my savings into graph adversarial technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan. I'm begging you, begging you like the beggiest beggar in all of begdom. I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine, Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those, um, big ticket orders. But I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Hmm. It sounds like they're just discussing a story, but why does this Miss Lapine Pauline seem so distressed? Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. In truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't gonna get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including, uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red-crowned finch, and a specter man. So I knew this story had helped out law enforcement, but this is the first time I'm learning of an innocent citizen being deceived by it. And investing so much more of for nothing. <laughs> uh oh. She really sounds like she's in pain. Um, Pina thinks we should just ask Charlotte what's going on. Hey, Charlotte! Traveler! Paimon! It's you! I was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. She read an article in the Steambird about a criminal who evaded Gardamek detection by disguising themselves as a blubber beast. Inspired by this story, she spent a lot of more on researching counter-criminal image recognition technology. Her aim was to improve Fontaine's public security by developing a device that could enhance Gardamek's target recognition capabilities. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. But unfortunately, it was just a fictional story, and her efforts and aspirations were all in vain. I tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. This is a new situation for us, too. It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting. And the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. Wait. Miss Lapine Pauline? What are you doing? I'm gonna pick a fight with a Gardamek, head to the Opera Epicles, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. Whoa, there's no need to go that far. I mean, come on, look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamex armor. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up at the Maison Guardianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. Actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? <laughs> 270,000 Mora. Okay. Well, escaping to the Fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute before that blew to pieces, and now I'm just a small-time engineer. 
I scraped together some savings over the past few years, but I put every last mora into this project, and now I'm left with nothing. It's not just my savings that are gone. It's my whole future as a graph adversarial technology specialist and my dreams of becoming a billionaire one day. <laughs> my life is over. Don't despair, Miss Lapine Pauline. I think I know a way for you to turn this around. This prototype you've given me, the camera lens for image recognition sample collection, it's really quite something. You said you designed it specifically for high-fidelity image capture and analysis, yes? The rapid focal length adjustment is a very useful function in its own right. It's sure to make many journalists' jobs much easier. In fact, I'd say it has the potential to revolutionize Fontaine's news media. So your research efforts thus far are by no means in vain. The technology you've developed may have many applications that you've never even considered. R really? Absolutely. I've been working as a journalist for the Steambird for a long time now. No one understands the issues we journalists face on a day-to-day -day basis better than me. So keep calm, take heart, and start thinking about mass production. In the meantime, I'll show your invention to all my colleagues to drum up interest in your product. I can't believe it. If this is true, then I can look into setting up a whole camera lens development pipeline. My big ticket orders and billionaire aspirations are still in the cards. Oh, maybe I should consider taking out another loan. That way, I can rapidly improve the lens production process, be the first to market, and prepare to battle for dominance in the camera industry. Oh, come on, stop daydreaming about your pipelines for a minute. Just take it one step at a time and see how it goes. There's no sense in putting all your eggs in one basket before things are even off the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can probably speak to some people I know and license my image recognition device to a workshop to raise some funds. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. There's no time to lose. I need to get to work. Early bird gets the worm. Uh, can you believe her? She just ran off. Paimon's pretty sure our advice went in one ear and out the other. It's understandable. When inspiration and passion strike at the same time, it's all too easy to throw yourself headfirst into your work and forget about everyone around you. A lot of journalists are the same way when they're first starting out. But don't you worry. I'm gonna write an article on all this and I'll be checking in on her regularly. Her research has the potential to benefit the entire journalistic community. I'll give her plenty of input to stop her from going down any rabbit holes and make sure mass production of her lens can begin as soon as possible. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Actually, you know what? Why don't you two take this prototype lens? I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances to use it on your travels. It takes the right person to get the most out of a new technology. In your hands, it's sure to capture some amazing sights. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. What a nice surprise. We were just curious about what you guys were talking about. Totally didn't expect to get a free gift out of it. You're welcome. I got something out of this, too. The beginnings of a very interesting news story. The boundaries between real news reports and news like fiction must not be blurred, even when there's a compelling justification for doing so. Yes, that's how I'll phrase it to the editors when I give them my feedback. Let's hope we don't mislead any more well-meaning citizens in the future.